Well, good evening. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. I appreciate each and every one being here tonight. Uh, we're going to move right along there again. If you're here visiting tonight, if you would fill out a visitor's card at the Welcome Center and drop it off. And as always, if you don't have a home church, if you're looking for a church, we'd love to have you here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Uh, is there any new prayer requests tonight uh, or any updates or anything y'all want to add tonight? Just continue to remember my friend Ron Sherlin, who had the ruptured colon. Uh, that's in Moore County, but he's doing a whole lot better. Uh, any other prayer requests tonight? Unspoken. I know we have several unspoken, and the Lord knows all about it. Amen. Okay. Remember Russell, he's not feeling too good tonight. He called me. Any others? Yes, Linda. What's her name? Vicky. And that was back surgery. All right. Any others? Any others? Okay. If there's no others, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and on all the youth to come on up here just as quick as I get done. We'll have a prayer for y'all so y'all can get back to y'all's classes tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another day you've blessed us with, Lord. I thank you for the services this morning. I thank you for the songs that sung. I thank you for the message of encouragement, Father, that, Lord, you are able, Father, to do all things, Lord. And we thank you for that so much, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that we would just take that, Lord, and plight our life, Lord, and just always put our faith and trust in you no matter the circumstances we may find ourselves in, the fiery furnace we may find ourselves in, or the lion's den we may find ourselves in the, in that den lion's den of life lord father we're thankful for your faithfulness lord and send us through those things lord Lord, we want to pray for these prayer requests even now and lift them up to you lord uh, uh the neil and sandy standards that was mentioned lord we want to pray for them father and their health now lord and just ask your healing hand upon them for linda and her doctor's appointment and for vicky and that back surgery lord and i know my mama she has an appointment tomorrow at the cancer center lord we just pray father for those visits now, Lord, and ask that you would just be with them and give them the peace, Lord, and be with the doctors again to treat them, Lord. But, Father, we know you made them. And, Lord, we just uh, ask that you would touch there, Lord. For my friend Ron, Lord, that has the colon problem, Lord, we're praying for him, Lord. Thank you for already what you've done, Lord. Thank you for his testimony. And, Father, just giving it all to you and trusting in you, Father. And, Lord, for Russell and so uh, many others within our church family, Lord, that are sick and not been feeling well, we pray now, Father, for them, Lord, and ask that you would touch, lead, and guide, and direct there, Lord. And, Lord, for the many unspokens now, Father, Lord, you know each heart and each need, Lord. We pray now, Father God, that you would just touch there, Lord, in a great and mighty way, Lord, and just have your will be done, Lord, in all these prayer requests even now, Father. Help us to continue to be faithful to you, Lord, in the days ahead, Lord, uh, telling others about the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father. And, Lord, we thank you again for tonight, Lord, and we just ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Could have our youth come up this time, the leaders, and have a word of prayer, and then y'all can go back, and then I'll, we'll do a couple. I got a few announcements, and then we'll go right along on with the service. Okay. Got two more coming. All right, y'all, uh, let us pray. Lord, we come to you again tonight, Lord, just praising you for this day, for getting us up, Lord, and just uh, allowing us to be in your house, Lord, and help us to never take that for granted, Lord. It's just a, a privilege each time we can come inside these walls, Lord, and, and we just praise you for this youth group, Lord, and we praise you that we've got a church that's got a youth group, Lord, and we just praise you'll just continue to bless them, anoint them, use them, Lord, because, Lord, they just uh, go through a lot, Lord, and we just pray that you'll put your heads, your protection around them lord as they go out to the schools lord and just help them to be that light for you lord and and we just pray to open our hearts lord just to, for the message and and just that we'll be able to just uh, lead the youth in the way that they should go tonight lord we just praise you and we love you in jesus name we pray amen amen
As far as announcements go, again, I just want to thank all the men that came out yesterday for the event, all those that helped cook, and thank all those ladies that provided uh, all the desserts. We had a great time in the Lord. As I mentioned before, we had 64 men show up and eight churches represented. So just thank the Lord for that. Also remember this coming Sunday will be Pastor Appreciation Day. There will be a meal on the grounds after service. So remember that. That afternoon we will be having service because the Shirley's will be here. That will be our special music. And then don't forget deacons October the 28th for the active deacons and for the non-active deacons. If you want to come, come to the, uh, we'll have, be having a deacon training center uh, over at the associational building. So please plan on attending that. I see your hand back there. I'll get you in a minute. And then Cameron's boys camp will be here on the 29th. Remember that. Uh, they'll be sharing testimonies and doing some singing for us at the morning service. And then the fifth Sunday night we'll be having a uh, movie night, Pardon by Grace, Lord willing, and popcorn at 530. And then on November the 1st, we'll be having a special business meeting. Did you want to say something, Scott? Desserts. Okay. All right. And then also, don't forget, there's a sign-up sheet back there for a Christmas banquet. Uh, remember that. That'll be on the 23rd. So that's back there for all those that plan on attending that. Please sign up, and we'd love for you to get signed up for that as soon as possible. And then, of course, just uh, remember Wednesday night services uh, again. And I think that's, I believe that's all the announcements I got. That's still a lot. It's been a busy month this month. So anything else? All right. Nothing else. Uh, we got a congregational hymn. Of course, continue to pray for those that are traveling. Cindy, she's out of town. We've got several others that continue to travel, so just remember those in your prayer. 176, as we all stand, there's power in the blood, page 176. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. blood, power in the blood, come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide, there's wonderful power in the blood, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. seat if we could have the ushers come forward for the evening offering. Let's pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, please forgive us of our sins. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and praise you for your love, your grace, and your mercy you give us each and every day. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to be with Pastor Hyman as he brings the word today to Heavenly Father. And 
that are, let our ears hear and our hearts receive it and apply it to our life, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, let us be the bold ones that can go out beyond these walls and tell everybody about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he's done for us and what he can do for them. And I thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who went to that cross at Calvary and shed his precious blood to cover our sins. I just ask you to be with those that are sick and afflicted, that are out traveling, that you'll give them traveling mercy and just keep the hedge of protection around them and just the ones that had on a prayer request and unspoken, just touch them and bless them and heal them in a mighty way, dear Heavenly Father. And just, you, just bless this offering we're about to take up and use it to further in your kingdom, dear Heavenly Father. And we love you, we thank you, and we're going to give you praise, honor, and glory for everything said and done. And just, dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you, most of all, be with those people that's involved in this war out there going on, the innocent people that didn't have nothing to do with it and didn't want to have no war. Just keep your protection around them, the hedge of protection. Just guide them and direct them to Heavenly Father and keep them safe, especially the kids and the women to Heavenly Father that have no involvement in it. And we're going to give you praise, honor, and glory and everything said and done. In Jesus' sweet name I pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus over you in your hurting in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do in desperation I'll seek heaven and pray this for you I pray for your healing circumstances
Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for another evening, Lord, already, Lord, for the songs that have been sung, Father. And Lord, we come again to you tonight, Father, as your people, Lord. And I just pray now, Father God, that the sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, would just touch your hearts, Lord, Father. That, Lord, you would speak to us, Father, through your word, Father, to grow our faith, Lord, more and more each day, Father, that we would be a, a, a soldier, Father, for you, Father, that would be one, Lord, that would glorify you and, and just... 
share the good news of Jesus Christ with, with others, Lord. And Father, as we'll see in just a few minutes, Father, yes, we live in a sin-stricken, cursed world even now, Father God. But just because we live in one, Father, don't mean we can't have joy. Don't mean we can't have faith in our Heavenly Father, Lord. So, Lord, speak through me tonight, Father, again, Lord, and speak to our hearts tonight, Father, that as we go out these doors tonight, Father, this week into a world, Father, that so many, Lord, it seems like don't want to hear about Christ anymore. Father, help us to be bold in a, in a time, Father, when it seems not acceptable, Lord, to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. Because, Lord, we know, Father, that judgment is coming, Lord. And, Father, the next time it came by water the first time, but the next time it will be by fire. And, Lord, I pray now, Father God, to just ask your will be done even now, Lord, tonight. Lord, we thank you for this time you've blessed us with, Lord. It is a privilege, Father, that each breath that we have, Father, is given by your grace. And, Lord, the opportunities we have together, Lord, to share, to laugh, to cry, Lord, to fellowship one again, with one another each and every time we gather here at the church house, Lord, and wherever we may be, let us never take that for granted. Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord, and we ask it in Jesus' precious name. And all of God's children said, Amen. If you got your Bibles tonight, turn to Hebrews chapter 7. You know, last Sunday uh, night, uh, sort of been looking at the days of Mo uh, Noah. And, you know, when you look around, you know, some things never change. And we talked about history repeating itself. And we see it uh, just as it was in the days of Noah, right now in 2023 in this nation and in this world. We see some of the same things, don't we, going on as in the days of Noah. So tonight I want you to think on this thought here, a blessed man in a cursed world. A blessed man in a cursed world. We began, I said last Sunday, looking at one of the great characters. And I love looking at characters that Bi of the Bible. It's just amazing to me and studying them. But we looked at that character in the Old Testament. And yet tonight I'm beginning in our study in the New Testament. Last week we looked at Jesus' words about the days of Noah in Luke chapter uh, 17. But tonight I want to bring you to one of the great summary verses I believe that I see of the Bible. In fact, a 950-year life here, when you think about Noah, a 950-year life is all boiled down to one verse. The God who knows everything says this is what you need to know. And just imagine, just imagine it's boiling your whole life down to just a, a statement or two. What would be said about your life or my life? If we was to stand in a courtroom, would there be enough evidence that we would be convicted of being a soldier of Jesus Christ? Would there be enough evidence that people would see that the judge could convict us of being that one witness for Christ Jesus? That's something we've all got to ask ourselves today, and we need that. We need that today. What would be said about your life or my life? Well, this is what the Holy Spirit leaves us in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 7, about the life of Noah and his example to all of us. And the Bible says here in chapter 11 and verse 7, it says, by faith. I've got that, just you, you underline that in your Bible. It says, by faith, Noah being warned of God. You know, we're being warned of God each and every day. Do you know that? And all you got to do is look in his word. But being warned of God of things not seen as yet. He hadn't seen those things. But guess what? He moved. There was some action there. Because he heard from God. He being warned there. And by faith he moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his. Do you see that there? So we see here there. Now we've already seen and established that the world of Noah's day was much like our own. We talked about that some. Remember in Genesis chapter 6, and the, need of no, and the need of Noah's day was the same as our own. And that is the grace of God and people who will walk with God. We need more people today, more, more men and more women that's going to be trustworthy and walking day by day, hand in hand with our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And when we see that, there'll be fruit out of our hearts and we'll be a great witness for the cause of Christ. That's what it's all about, church. It's not about being popular. It's not about feeling, you know, just doing this and doing that. It's about walking with the Lord. Amen? So we see that there. Now, we're going back in time some 4,300 years, but we have established this once again already. Some things never change. So if the world is the same, don't you think tonight that just maybe, perhaps the need would be the same for someone like Noah to walk with God? And here's a picture of a blessed man here in a cursed world in that time. And we're living, friend, today in a cursed world. And you and me can't change that. You know that? that, that this is a fallen humanity surrounding us today. And it's amazing to me. You want to see some, just turn the news on. Hear the social media all around you killing this and that. Uh, all Everything going on. But we, you know, we live in a fallen world. It's a planet that bears, you might say, the marks uh, of the fall and the curse of sin and judgment is coming. As I said before, judgment came before by water, but judgment's coming next time by fire. So think about that tonight. But I'm happy to tell you tonight that in a cursed world, you and I can still have a blessed life. Amen. You can be a blessed man. You can be a blessed woman. You can be a blessed boy. And you can be a blessed girl. And you can even have a blessed family. Well, preacher, how does that happen? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you uh, the elements, you might say. These little elements that I wrote down, these gold nuggets that I find in Scripture, they're all found right here in this great summary, you might say, verse here in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. We see here in this verse here, we see his faith. In fact, when you look at that verse right there, the first two words was by faith, right? And what's the last two words right there? By faith. We see that by faith and by faith. We see that they're in that verse. So think about it. Everything uh, that does not begin, listen to me, with faith will end in failure. Everything that does not begin with faith will end in failure. And every good thing that God ever does in a person, listen to me, or through a person or with a person is because of faith in God. You know, John said in 1 John 5 and 4, I believe we got that scripture up there. He said, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. What church? Even our faith. Do you see that there? That's God's word there. Do you know four times in scripture we read the just shall live by faith? Yeah, I got them too. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38, I believe we got there. Now the just shall what church? Live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So we see that again there, shall live by faith. Also we see it there in Romans chapter 1. Paul tells us in verse 17. For therein is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, what? The just shall live by faith. Faith. Hey, it don't end there. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 there. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just what shall live by faith. Oh man, that's all over there, there in the New Testament. Well, let's go back to the Old Testament. In Habakkuk, you know where Habakkuk is? That's not something you chew. That's a book of the Bible there, Habakkuk, okay? Right there we see right there, uh, chapter 2 and verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Do you see that right there? So the same passage here, and you can look there in chapter 11 there. I believe we got there in verse 6. What does it say there? But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, we've seen that this morning, it is impossible to please him. Do you see that? So, so if you're going to be blessed in this cursed world, number one, this, there must be faith in God. There must be faith in God. It's amazing to me at all the things we put our faith in. 
I was talking to some boys over at the gym, witnessing to them. Um, thank the Lord, two of them came to a men's bre uh, supper yesterday evening. But you realize we going down the road each and every day, and we ain't but six foot apart from a head-on collision, but we put faith in that person that we're meeting every time on the road. But yet we won't put there again that faith in God that, of anything that may be staring us, as I mentioned before, in our face. So there must be faith in God. You must settle this, that your faith is not in yourself. Lord, don't let that happen. It's not in what you can do. It's not in how smart you are. It's not in men. It's not in women. It's not in circumstances. It is in the one who never, ever, never, ever changes. Listen, the origin of faith must be the word of God. Did you hear me? The Bible here we see says, He was warned of God. He believed what God said. Rome, I think we got wrong. Listen to what Romans 10 and 17 says. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and what church? And hearing by the word of God. So our faith grows not just hearing a preacher, not just hearing uh, reading a magazine. Our faith grows in reading the real true word of God. Can I get an amen on that? I believe that. So I got a question tonight. Do you need increased faith tonight? I do. We all do, don't we? We do. We do. Do you need increased faith tonight? You don't muster, muster up faith. You get in the Word of God, and the Word of God builds up your faith. So listen to me. That's how important it is, not just to read your Bibles and look at these scriptures today, uh, this morning, and look at them tonight. You need to be in the Word of God each and every day, and that's what is going to build your faith and my faith every day, right? Every day we give so much time to everything else but what truly matters, which is God's Word. So the origin is the Word of God. The origin is the Word of God. Now the outlook of faith is that faith helps you see what you can't see. That's why the first verse there of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 there in that same chapter, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. Ain't that what it says? You see, Noah, he couldn't see uh, how it all was going to turn out. Many times in our life, we can't see how it's all going to turn out. But we still got to have faith in God and put our trust in him, knowing that whatever he does, like I said this morning, is going to be good. And it's going to be great. So Noah, he couldn't see how all this was going to turn out. But he believed God. He believed God. Noah didn't see the raindrops first, but he looked to the Lord in faith. Begin in faith. We talked about that just a minute ago. You know, that I, I read this story about the farmers, you know, supposed to get their crops in. Which one of them had more faith? Gotta let, we got to wait on rain. We're waiting on rain. We're waiting on rain. But that one farmer, guess what? He went ahead and sowed his seeds, and by faith, he was trusting that the Lord was going to bring the rain. And I see Noah here. He didn't know. He didn't see no raindrops first, but he obeyed the Lord. Even though it, uh, I, it had to be, I just couldn't imagine it. But he looked to the Lord in faith. So begin in faith. Did you know that Noah's name, that name literally means rest? Don't some of y'all want some rest? I'm tired. I'll go to bed early tonight. That's awesome to me because as I thought about that, he lived in some chaotic times and had rest. And I live in some chaotic times and I can have rest if I put my faith in the Lord. Amen. He was in some tremendous times of evil. We see some tremendous times of evil happening in even our own country today and especially around the world. And I want you to know that faith provides rest in the midst of the greatest chaos. And this is the rest of faith. And you can have it if your spirit tonight, my brothers and my sisters, listen to me. You can know what it is to rest in God. Get in the Word and let the Word get into you. That's the best thing you can do. I, that's better than melatonin. That's better. I take an eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper every night before I go to bed. It helps me sleep good. It opens my veins up, it says. It seems to help. 
But there's nothing like getting in God's Word and letting it get into you. The second element, nugget there, is not only his faith. Number two, it is his fear. His fear. Because the Bible says in verse 7 that he moved what, church? With fear. Do you see that there? It says that he moved with fear. Now, faith and fear, listen to me, are always connected. Faith in God and the fear of God always connected to one another. Well, why, Mike? Because they're both Godward. They're both Godward. We believe God and we fear the Lord. And it's not that we fear that God is going to destroy us. It is rather that we stand in a holy awe, in a holy reverence. What has ever happened to the reverence and the awe of an almighty God? It seems like it's gone even within the church house today. Think about that. You know, we, we stand in a spirit of worship and uh, recognizing His greatness and His power and His goodness and His righteousness and His holiness. This is the fear of the Lord. Hey, for the believer, the fear of God is not a fear that God would hurt me. I was thinking about this. But a fear when I get it in my heart and get it in my soul, it's not a fear that my Lord and my Savior is going to hurt me, my but a fear that I would hurt him through the life that I'm living. That's the real deal there, friend. Awesome. And I really believe that Noah understood that he was safe in the Lord, that he and his family were being cared for by the grace of God, and still, it says, he moved with fear. So you've got fear's direction, that's Godward, and fear's motion. It, that fe and fear's motion is this. It's that fear sets things in motion. What? He moved with fear. You know why we have so little movement today? Do you know why we have so little movement today? It's because there's so little fear or little of, of the fear of God. Do you know that? Do you know why there are so few people who are really doing or not or who are really doing what they ought to do? Why they're not doing what they ought to do? Because there is no fear of the Lord. Right? It's because they don't believe like they ought to believe. And when you get a glimpse of who God is, it changes you, my friend. It truly changes you. You can't hear from God and know God and be that same person or that same vessel. Right? And so we need a revival of the fear of the Lord. We truly do then not only is there, there his faith and his fear in this verse, but number three I see here, there is his family. Because the Bible says there that he what? He prepared an ark to the saving of his house. His house. And we'll talk more about this later on. But I want you to see that he used the influence God gave him and he started at home. That's very important. He was a man who was untouched by the influence of culture around him. He wasn't captured. He wasn't influenced by the world. He was not in love with this, you might say, world system. The things of the world. And praise God for that because the world passes the way and the lust thereof. And pull up First John. I'll just give it to you. 2 and 17. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth for how long? Forever. And how long is forever? Forever and eternity. Do you see that? And I'll tell you what he, 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 he was in love with. He was in love with the Lord. And he was in love with those that God had graciously given him. It's amazing me today. It is so sad. And I'm so thankful for the family that I was raised up in. But I look around in a day and time now where parents don't care about their youngins. Let them, let them go here and there and everywhere. Don't have them in church. Have them on iPhones. All this mess popping up on them. They'll, I've seen them over at the gym. Throw them in the corner over and give them iPads and iPhones and just sit there babysitting them. You got families today just throwing their youngins away everywhere. Amen? You want to make a difference, start at your own house and not somebody else's house. Amen? 
You want to make a difference in, a, in this cursed world? Begin by getting your family to the Lord. And so we have his faith, we have his fear, we have his family, and then notice how this story ends. Number four is this last little element. It ends with his fullness. Thank you, Lord. Because the Bible says this, that he not only condemned the world, but he became heir do you see that in that last portion of verse 7 there? At the end of the verse right there. I love that. By thee which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. I was thinking about this, Brother Wayne, and I seen this and I said, "If you," ever, I thought to myself, and I've never really thought about it, have you ever thought about what Noah inherited? Let that just sink in just a minute. Because he got it all. I don't know how wealthy he was when he got on that ark or before he got on that ark. But I know when he got off that ark, he had the whole world. Think about that. People fuss and fight about land. This man inherited the whole world. Think about that. Have you ever thought about that? He had the whole world. He literally inherited the whole earth. And yet, listen to me. I've heard it all the time. A guy told me one time, he said, I don't want all the land. I just want everything that joins me. Well, guess what? Somebody else is going to own that one day. But even though he inherited the whole world, his greatest wealth wasn't material, friend. And your greatest wealth ain't material either. And I'm about to finish up here. I kept you long today and I'm going to keep you short tonight. But I hope you get something out of this. His greatest wealth was spiritual. And that is our greatest wealth, friend. Is the spiritual things. The Bible says he became heir. He became heir. I love that. And that really hit me. Of the righteousness which is by faith. Brother, man, oh, the riches of righteousness. I'm going to tell you, friend, money can't buy that. You can spend all the money you want to, but money will not buy that. If you want the blessings of God in this wicked, chaotic, sin-stricken world, this is the way. Instead of chasing after money, and riches, and things, and more stuff, and more stuff, and more stuff. Believe the Lord. Fear the Lord. Minister to your family and watch God bring his fullness into your life. Are you missing something tonight? Well, ask yourself, what's been first in my life? Where's my faith been at? And Noah's story here is not an ending. Now, guess what, though? It wasn't an ending for him, but it was an ending for a whole lot more bunch of people that was trying to get on that ark, wasn't it? But the doors were slammed closed, and they wasn't getting on. Because when God does something, you ain't going to go against that. And it was the ending for a lot of people, but it was a beginning for him. It was a new beginning for him and his family. And I want you to know tonight, as we close, that God has a new beginning for us, even at the end of time. Do you know that? I'm thankful for that today. There's going to be a new beginning for me when I'm going out of this old body that's fading away day by day. There's a new beginning for God's people that we, that we can have right now when we begin to simply believe and obey God. Lord willing, we'll be back to our, our, here again, back in this same. The Lord's been dealing with me on some things here. Maybe I, I was, had a thought in my mind. Or you, or get, get your family on the ark. <laughs> get your family on the ark because time is drawing nigh. But I know the next couple of weeks on Sunday nights we got some things going on. We'll see how the Lord leads there. 
But Lord willing, we're going to be back here and we're going to look at this again. But let me leave you with this one verse as we close tonight. And I pray you'll think about this tonight. From the original account in Genesis 6 and 22. And I think it's one of the greatest things that could ever be said of a child of God in 622. Thus did. That word did, that's action. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. And I love this part right here. We can be commanded to do a lot of things. And we can hear, do, hear a lot of things. But I see an application here. So did he. Is God commanding me tonight to do something? Absolutely. Is he commanding you to do something? Absolutely. If nothing else, it's to witness and tell others about Christ. Can we say, or can he say, so did Mike, so did you, so did he. A man here that never seen, you know, had, had basically, there again, he didn't see the raindrops. But he went ahead and just, and he didn't have no Makita saws and table saws and air nailers and nothing else. He had, I believe it was a gopher wood, pitch and tar and all those things are. And day by day by day by day by day. And it'd been easy to say, man, really? But guess what? By faith, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. This is the faith that leads to obedience. We as a church, as individuals, as a church family here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, we need to determine to do all that God tells you and me to do today and every day. And as we, you do and I do, we will know his blessings, I promise you, in a sin-stricken, cursed world. And just as Noah did according to all the commanded, we're to do the same thing. So did he. Living, living with a blessing in a cursed world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for another night for your word, Lord. And Father, I pray even now, Lord, as always, Lord, as we close tonight, Lord, as they put a song on to play even now, Father. That, Lord, that you would just have your will and your way again, for Lord, tonight, Father. And I thank you, Lord, again for all that you've done today, Lord, in this service, Lord. But, Father, as all the scriptures that we looked at and shared, Father, through your word, your written word, your living word, Lord. Father, there has to be application in all of our lives, Lord. And I pray tonight, Father, as we leave here, as we start out a new week, Lord. Father, each and every one of us, Lord, would take it to heart, Lord, and realize, Father, that you gave us commandments, Lord, Father, to live by, Lord. And, Father, you gave us uh, so much, Lord, Father. Lord, you gave it all on that old rugged cross, Lord. And how can we halfway serve you and halfway live for you in knowing all that you did for us, Lord? Lord, I pray tonight, Father, Lord, if there's one here tonight, Lord, that has a burden, that has a need, Lord, before we dismiss tonight, Father, Lord, that you just touch their hearts and lead God in the direct, Lord. I thank you, Father, and ask all us in Christ's name. Amen. As we all stand at this time, if there's a need tonight, come to an old-fashioned altar. If you care about this country, come and say a prayer for this country. Say a, a prayer for this nation and this world. Say a prayer for Israel and all the things that are going on there. Say a prayer for your family. Say a prayer that the Lord would help you to be more obedient, more faithful, and do the things that he expects us, especially men, and being the spiritual leaders of our household.
thankful for a God that we can cry out to and he still answers prayers, ain't you? I'm thankful when I get home tonight, if something comes up, if she's asleep or whoever may be asleep, that I can get on my knees and I got a Lord that's always awake. And I can cry out to him in faith, knowing that he hears my cries and just put my trust in him. Thank you, Lord. All of God's children said, thank you all again for being here today. Continue to pray for me and I'll pray for you each and every day. A lot going on, a lot happening. Just remember Wednesday night services at 7 o'clock. Lord willing, we'll be back in the book of Acts, see how the, what the Lord has to show us there. And then, of course, uh, I meant, forgot to mention that car wash is going to be next Saturday from 1030 to 1 up at the Advanced Auto Store. It's rescheduled, so remember that the youth be here by 10 o'clock next Saturday. Is that it? All hearts cleared? All right. Just keep going forward for our Lord. And knowing one day we're going to be around the throne with our Heavenly Father, and we're going to rule and reign. Amen? Amen. With that said, Brother Scott, if you would dismiss us.